All right. Hello, hello, hello. It's Cape 5-1. Uh, we are here in the new new update for the uh, UH-60. Uh, we just downloaded off FlightSim.to for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, so I am playing this on a MacBook Pro, so forgive the uh, poor graphics. Uh, I've got it totally on low so that I can get a somewhat decent frame rate. But all right, and I've got my track IR set up, so anywhere I move my head, I should be able to kind of look around the cockpit. So at first glance, it is looking pretty good. Uh, there's a new addition here of this little little iPad, which is pretty cool. Um, it's kind of illegal to set your iPad up right there, but some people do it anyway. All right, so it looks like we're in the UH-60 mic, um, but there's a couple things that I'm noticing right off the bat. So. Um, if I if I move my pedals, I'm actually just really moving the the toe brakes here, right? So this is actually my yaw. Really, these pedals should be kind of moving uh, forward and after each other, right? And then if I push down up at the top like this, that that that'll be my brakes. Um, the cyclic here, this is actually a UH-60 Lima cyclic, so there's a lot of uh, additional buttons that would be on the, the mic cyclic. All right. Uh, looking over here at the center console, not too bad. The parking brake right there looks to be uh, canted 90 degrees to the right. It should just be uh, like parallel. Um, let's see, everything else is looking decent here. Uh, my MFDs, I got my flight director over here. Not too bad. All right, let's take a look up top. So up top here, what we actually have is a uh, UH-60 Lima upper console. So you'll see right over here, it says backup hydraulic pump switch and hydraulic leak test switch. If we look over here, we have those we have those right here. Those were moved from the Lima to the mic. So we got two different cockpits going on at once here. It's all good. All right, now, typically what we would do to start this thing, turn the battery switches. There should be two of them, but I got one because it's a Lima. Turn the battery switch on, and then this HUD comes up. Now, HUD will never have during the day. Um, there might be some swoopy versions of the Blackhawk. I'm just not tracking, but uh, we wouldn't wouldn't really have this during the day. This is a, a nighttime thing. Kind of goes onto the end of your night vision goggles. You get your little HUD. Okay, once we do that, we can go fuel pump switch APU. Uh, sorry, air source heat switch APU should already be on. Uh, we'd have our generators on over here. Sorry, it's really awkward trying to All right, so main generators are on. Uh, bat switch is on. The hydraulic uh, backup pump should go to auto, but that's really if we want to just go through all the pre-flight tests, we're not going to worry about that, so we'll just leave it off. Plus, I don't really know which one I should turn on or if they're uh, operational this time. Oh, yeah, make sure our air source heat switch is in APU or else we won't be able to crank our engines. All right, fuel pump. All right, cool. Uh, looks like that's as good as it's going to get. Oh, yeah, this this should be on open. Oh, and uh, the emergency fire T handles should always be forward. We're never going to have those back unless we're actually killing an engine. What these do is basically just tells the fire bottles which engine we want to extinguish if there's a if there's a fire. So this thing will light up if there's a fire in that engine. Just pull it back. It'll pull off the fuel system selector with it. So uh, reading in there a little comments, the uh, the actual uh, APU isn't functioning right now, but typically we would go uh, fuel pump switch APU boost, which should be forward. I think we have this. Uh, actually, I can't remember. I it's been a while since I've flown a Lima. Uh, and then APU control switch on. Uh, but they said that it's not currently functioning, so no big deal. Uh, when we hit our battery switch, we did get our MFDs to come on. Um, and we, we wouldn't be able to get these until we turned our APU generator on. So let's say we'll just assume our APU is on. And then right here should be the APU generator switch. It looks like it's already on. Okay. 
So I have PFD, and then let's go to, let's check out our ECAST page. Okay, so it changed it. That looks like it changed all four of them. So hopefully we'll be able to get these to work independently. Yeah, it looks like it's changing them all. No nav display, that's cool. TAC map. Okay, it looks like TAC map isn't available yet. All right, I guess I'll go up ECAST page while I start. So the starter button should be right up here on top of the engine power control lever. And there's also a little switch there for the engine to pull the, uh, the PCL off, but we're still working on that. All right, so we're going to go to crossfeed, first flight of the day, but they say to go to direct, so that's fine. We'll just go to direct. That means that uh, if we have if we put this in crossfeed, then this engine right here is the number two engine would start sucking from the number one fuel cell. But direct is fine. I mean, we, we can start that way. It'll be no problem. Okay, so I'm going to control E. And then roll these to idle. Let's see. All right. Get the blades start spinning. Cool. So right here, I would get a <laughs> engine starter engaged. Caution. And I'd be looking for a uh, rise in NG. I'd be looking for my TGT to be below. Uh, I don't, don't want to give out too many details here. But I'd also be looking for my uh, engine oil pressure, TGT, and NP to start up. So it looks like I've got a positive rise in those. Yeah, this is, it, it looks pretty cool. It's not quite accurate, but we're getting there. Let's see if this number two engine is going to start here. Okay, number one engine NP is already up at like 90. Let's see if I have to hit control E again. Something's happening over here in the number two engine. Okay. Yeah, they, they've got some instructions on their website specific instructions on how all this stuff works, but I'm able to get it working. Alright. Okay, there we go. Looks like NP came up here. All right, so rotors are at 57%, so that means we need to advance these things to fly. Let's advance our PCLs to fly. That should bring your rotors up. All right, rotors are now at 100% uh, or close to it good on fuel. Alright, so at this point I'd do my before taxi check. I'd release my park and brake. Alright, so that really we release it just by pressing on the tow brakes and then that thing would just kind of pop down. So that is the correct orientation. It just goes up and down. There's no need to twist it or anything like that. Um, Alright, and then right to the left of that so I'll put my mountain cursor on over here. Right here would be my tail wheel switch unlock button and we basically start taxiing forward so I'm going to give it a little looks like my ECAS page is good here switch over to PFD so I give it some forward cyclic and then just a little bit of collective and we're taxiing and now I can use my pedals to steer myself okay Taking off. All right, and yeah, we're at Cairns Army Airfield here. So you see some other Blackhawks over here. This is going to be our medevac burst for flat iron. Let's go check out 
tower over here. All right, so it's not flying terribly. I think they're still working on the flight model. This HUD is really annoying. I'm gonna figure out how to turn that off. Definitely would not have that on right now. But it is giving some pretty accurate indications here. Let's see if I can get it out of trim. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that works. All right, coming over here. Here's the TH-67s. And there's the Lakotas. Again, forgive me for having this on low graphics, but that's all i got right now. There's the tower. Alright. So it looks like, what is my current heading here? Okay, so here's runway 36, which means 06 should be this way. Runway 06 is so off to the left, should be Fort Rucker. Let's go check out Mother Rucker over here. So right here, I'm doing 80 knots, and I have this big red, my airspeed indicator is all red right now. That would be the VNE arc, velocity never exceed. And right now at 80 knots, the stabilator should be programmed up to about zero. So let's check it out what it looks like in the back. All right, so it's programmed up, that's good. The other thing I notice is that when we're hovering, um, we should be about five degrees nose up. All right, um, so the Black Hawk actually hovers with a nose up attitude. The whole rotor system is basically canted three degrees forward. And that way, when you're hovering, your nose high, the tail should kind of just be dragging on the ground. And as you transition into forward flight, um, we hit about a hundred knots. Then we should be pretty much straight. here so I'll say I'm really impressed with uh, the modeling and this is on low graphics right so I can't imagine what it looks like on high um, all this whole center console and this whole uh, panel right here my ESIS is even working that's my emergency standby instrument system right there I'm trying to zoom in on it it looks good so that's working good um, got a clock master warning panel looks good So I'm pretty impressed with uh, all the modeling and everything, uh, but definitely a lot of stuff to work out as far as uh, the functionality. Again, our cyclic and collective, these are these are from Alima. See, we have a servo off switch right here. This switch right here, that was removed uh, when we upgraded to the mic and it was put over here. So we also have a servo off switch right there. So it should be one or the other. Back when we had, uh, when it was just the, uh, when it was a Lima, we had steam gauges over here instead of these uh, multifunction displays. Um, it looks like the flight director isn't functional yet. Let's see. I think I'm about to crash. Yeah, there we go. Kind of like flying with my left hand and messing around with stuff with my right hand. So this is looking good. Oh yeah, I'm about to eat shit. <laughs> not the best handling, but it's really not bad, in my opinion. I uh, probably shouldn't be able to do a pedal turn. Oh yeah, I'm going pretty slow, so let me try to build up some airspeed here and see how the pedal works. Alright, a little slow to accelerate, come on. I'm like 30 degrees nose down. I should be accelerating pretty quickly here. All right, now it's starting to build up. 
at 85 knots. So now let's try some pedal. Yeah, probably wouldn't wouldn't be that drastic. So we have a cambered fairing in the back of Blackhawk that kind of keeps you straight in forward flight. Right? At a hover, we depend on that tail rotor to keep us from uh, yawing out of control. But once we get into forward flight, it kind of loses its purpose once you hit about 100 knots. This cambered fairing will keep us keep us straight in a line. So I'll, I'll just say this. Like this thing, if they keep doing work on it and... Uh, Oh look, we actually got some little indications on here. I'm not sure if that was from... So I can't engage my flight director because this hover, this should actually be over here. This should be the coupled button, coupled or uncoupled. Looks like I can yeah, change my heading bug, but I'm not getting anything on the HSI right now. Let's see if we can do airspeed hold. So it's going to be a really monumental task to get this thing fully functional. I think this is a really great start, um, but given all the little indications we would get on this MFD, I mean, it gets very complex, right? And we're not even getting into the FMS over here, which it looks like they just kind of have like a, a basic little display. Looks like it's not working right now. I don't think any of the buttons work. Oh, crap. And I'm dead. Okay, so I got a little distracted there, but... Um, to the developers, I think you guys are off to a great start. Definitely a lot of stuff to uh, to kind of polish up there. Um, probably want to just take a second look at, at the upper console and the actual flight controls themselves if we are, in fact, going to do a, a mic model. Uh, a lot of that stuff has changed. Um, and then, obviously, it would be super cool to be able to use the APU to start it up and all that and uh, get the, the correct indications on the ECAS page. I think another thing that's going to be really big is if you can get all the MFDs to work independently. So if you can change one, have one, you know, like the outboard on the pilot side here to be on the PFD and the inboard to be on ECAS or attack map or however you want to sort that out. And really, I mean, you could just put like the VFR map or, or whatever you want on there. It doesn't I wouldn't say it has to be exactly according to the real the real thing, but um, yeah, definitely definitely a great start and really impressive modeling all around. But all right, well that'll do it for this video. We'll uh, have something cool for you on the next uh, next update.